Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for making the time in attending this session of CrowdStrike Anatomy of a Modern Cyber Attack. Uh, in this edition, MENA ISAC 2020. Uh, my name is Roland Dakash. I'm the team leader for systems engineering in CrowdStrike Middle East, Turkey, and Africa. And I will be more than happy to walk you through the different stages of a modern sophisticated attack and what we can do to stop it. This session is gonna also cover a live demo of a, an actual intrusion and how we can detect it and uh, stop it. As we all know, uh, threats today and cyber attacks are much more prevalent, much more ubiquitous, and they target organizations of any size and in any geographical location and across any uh, sector. With the prevalence of the e-crime activities, uh, CrowdStrike has been uh, on a mission since 2011 to stop breaches. In our definition, a breach is much more than just a malware execution on an endpoint. Uh, it is, uh, in a broader sense, uh, an attack or an intrusion that is successful in penetrating multiple endpoints in an organization and that is successful in either data theft or data corruption or data encryption in the case of ransomware, uh, et cetera. So uh, rather than being malware focused with CrowdStrike, we actually fingerprint the threat actors themselves. According to our latest uh, threat report, more than 50% of modern attacks are actually not using any malware. So how are these uh, very sophisticated attacks that successfully evade the firewall, the sandbox, the AV, uh, able to execute? Uh, the recipe is simple. It is what we call living off the land attacks. Rather than creating and writing a new malware samples to penetrate an environment, the attackers are either leveraging exploits within existing vulnerable applications on a system, whether it's Adobe PDF or Microsoft Word or any of the Office Suite tools, or leveraging what we call the uh, admin tools, which are the CMD, the PowerShell, the Reg SVR, the scheduled tasks, etc., to establish a foothold uh, on an endpoint without ringing any bell on a sandbox or uh, on a traditional AV. This tradecraft used to be um, uniquely uh, utilized by uh, advanced APT groups and nation state attackers. What we're seeing today is uh, e-crime actors who are supposedly less sophisticated than APT groups having uh, recourse to the same level of tools and to the same level of sophistication. With the growth of the under web or the dark web society that is sharing uh, criminal tools and hacking tools, it's much, more, um, uh, it's much easier today to gain access to these nation state level uh, attacks and expertise. If we look at uh, history of the e-crime evolution in the last 12 months, uh, you must have heard the names Ryuk, Trickbot, Emotet, Revel, Bitpamer, etc. These tools are actually managed by a handful of e-crime actors. Uh, the most notorious one might be uh, Wizard Spider. Uh, we also name Mummy Spider and Indrik Spider, the guys behind the um, Drydex uh, Trojan. And as you can see on this map, these tools that are uh, most of the time being used for financial crime or ransomware activities are targeting customers across all verticals. So whether you're a university or a school or a healthcare institution or a government entity or a bank or an insurance company, as long as you haven't fortified your defenses, you might be a target of an e-crime activity. E-crime does not really have a political agenda. E-crime is mostly motivated by financial gain. And as long as you don't do the exercise to protect your organization, you might be next in becoming a, a victim of an e-crime uh, activity. So how does a modern attacker behave? 
uh, over the last few years, the attack kill chain hasn't uh, had any uh, major modifications by itself. However, the tools and tactics used to leverage this attack kill chain have obviously evolved. So we see almost on a weekly basis, a new version of Mimikatz that uh, succeeds against a fully patched, fully updated uh, Windows 10 machine, for example. And we see many other tools like Cobalt Strike and like uh, many other uh, attack frameworks uh, being very uh, well maintained to be able to successfully uh, compromise uh, Windows systems specifically. So uh, if we look at the entire uh, kill chain from the initial access stage, the discovery stage, the reconnaissance, up to the level of credential dumping or privilege escalation, to the point where the attacker decides to move to other endpoints in the network, what we call lateral movement uh, attacks, then establishing a foothold using persistence by modifying the registry, the auto run keys, the ASAP points, the scheduled tasks, up to the stage of actual attack execution, whether the target is a ransomware infection or data theft or data exfiltration. This is uh, what an attacker or a hands-on keyboard threat actor uh, does. If you looked at the latest MITRE test, which is the uh, uh, simulation based on Cozy Bear, uh, otherwise known as APT29, the testing has put uh, into the MASH a lot of uh, EDR technologies and executed this uh, tradecraft of an advanced APT group. And if you look at the life cycle of the attack, uh, you see that while the attack stages are uh, similar and consistent to what we've always known for many years, the tr tradecraft used to perform these um, um, attack uh, executions uh, are basically mostly uh, scripts, malicious commands, leveraging of PowerShell, of CMD, rather than uh, just malware. So malware is still being used as initial uh, entry point, initial beachhead into an environment. However, if we fail to catch the initial execution of a malware, very few technologies uh, allow us to follow through the uh, attack stages and detect the existing attacker in an environment. So if you look at uh, the use of tools, uh, we can highlight Mimikatz, key loggers, admin shares, local tools, and we've named a few already, modifying the system by scheduled tasks, by auto run, by adding uh, an admin account, by elevating privileges, uh, etc., mounting file shares, trying lateral movement, communicating with a C2 channel. So that's what a modern attack looks like. The conclusions of MITRE when they uh, actually evaluated uh, CrowdStrike Falcon were that CrowdStrike was able to detect the attack at 100% of the stages, 19 out of 19. And more importantly, it's not anymore a game of visibility of detection. Uh, it's a game of contextualization. I need you to keep this word uh, in mind. Uh, the tool that is able to stop a modern attack has to be able to connect the dots. It has to correlate telemetry and metadata into detections, and it has to correlate detections into incidents, leveraging AI, machine learning. This is the game. The game is no longer collecting telemetry from endpoints, which many uh, solutions on the market are able to do. The game today is how can I leverage my AI capabilities, my human threat hunting capabilities, my threat intelligence feeds, my threat analytics to detect an attack from the thousands and millions of events that are generated every day from my environment. And more importantly, consistency. So you need to make sure that the tool that you're deploying is consistent across hundreds, thousands, or hundreds of thousands of endpoints without any performance degradation, without any delays in detection, et cetera. So for the purpose of this session, I set up a very uh, small lab, which is a simulation of a very advanced 
uh, attack using a spear phishing email with a, a lure uh, document that is infected by a malicious macro. Um, we have a target machine uh, that is called Win10 uh, Detect, uh, which is running CrowdStrike agent in detection mode only so that we can monitor the different stages of the attack. We have another machine, which is called uh, Win10 Block, which is uh, running CrowdStrike in blocking mode to see the efficiency of the actual prevention. And finally, we have another victim, which is Win10 Contractor, mainly that's the lateral movement victim. On the side of the hacker, myself impersonating the uh, black hat attacker, uh, I'm running Kali Linux with a very well-known uh, framework that is similar to Metasploit. It's called Coadic. And uh, I'm gonna use the common attacker techniques, uh, spear phishing email, command and control, reconnaissance, credential dumping, lateral movement, and I'm gonna uh, see the success of this uh, attack. So without further ado, I'm gonna uh, actually uh, stop the share uh, and move into the uh, system itself. All right, now that we're able to log into the system, let me share And as you can see now, that's a lab that is powered by AWS, uh, where I've set up all my virtual machines to perform the attack. Starting with uh, the uh, uh, attack vector number one, which is the obfuscated uh, file. Let me show you what I've done. I've weaponized a document saved as a docm file, a macro enabled file, with a very simple to use macro that uses MSHTA, which is a very legitimate Windows process, to run a shell into my victim machine. So on this machine, let me actually go back to my Kali Linux. As you can see here, I have preloaded Coadic and set up a stager on MSHTA. Uh, I will execute the document on this victim machine. Done. Nothing pops up, nothing weird. As you can see here, I have a new zombie set up on this machine with the simple fact that I double clicked on this infected file. A very simple, a very clean attack to execute. Now I have my machine or my victim machine fully under my control. So if I do, if you're familiar with Kowadic, you would know the command zombie. Uh, so if I check my zombie, I see that I have a new channel established to this machine. So let me jump into the shell of the machine that I have just victimized. And there you go. I'm sitting now on the command line of the victim machine. From this point onward, I can wreak havoc on the environment. I can run any command I want, and I'm gonna play many of these commands and I'm gonna show you uh, what an attacker uh, would do. So if I'm the attacker, I am new to the environment, I will start by doing some reconnaissance. So a who am I, an IP config, just discovering my surroundings. Then I will probably do a system info, check the output, I would do a net stat, see who is this machine communicating with, etc. And from there on, I'm gonna uh, move into a more sophisticated uh, attack approach. So let me go into this Word document that I have prepared, which is weaponized commands that I can use on PowerShell to uh, perform various malicious activities starting with a PowerShell command to download uh, some malicious PowerShell script from GitHub. Let me play this command on the system. I've just executed PowerShell. Then 
another command that is using run dll32 a javascript based attack i'm going to copy it and paste it on my Kali. Then I'm going to uh, try a command that is actually running an encoded version of Mimikatz. So using base64 encoding, I've just hidden the contents of this command. Let me execute it. And as you can see, I can do whatever I want on my victim machine. Now, if I decide to do some lateral movement, I will uh, try to use psexec, for example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download psexec from sysinternals, rename it as 1.exe. Now that I have psexec on my system, on my victim system, I'll try to use a uh, so I downloaded it via a bits admin job. I will try to use PS exec to jump onto uh, another machine in the environment, which for this purpose of the demo is the uh, contractor machine. I'm gonna play this command and I'm gonna see if um, uh, the attack will succeed, etc. Now I've just executed an attack in uh, detection mode of uh, CrowdStrike. Let me go to the machine where I actually protected the, the endpoint with CrowdStrike endpoint. All right. So um, let's go into the uh, alert section. I'm going to jump into my CrowdStrike console right now. Now I am on the console of CrowdStrike. And CrowdStrike is intelligent enough to be able to correlate multiple detections into incidents. So rather than an analyst looking at hundreds or thousands of detections per day, he can look at five or 10 incidents. Using machine learning, we are able to achieve uh, this a very sophisticated correlation. So I've, I've, I saw an incident that was caused by my attack simulation. Let me dissect the different stages of the attack. So as you can see in the summary page, CrowdStrike has already stored every command that was ex executed by the threat actor and saved it to me in a, a timeline uh, function. So if I go to the bottom of this attack, you will see that once I gained access on this endpoint, I typed who am I, route print, an IP config. Uh, I used MSHTA to do a callback to the malicious endpoint. And from this point onward, CrowdStrike is actually showing me the commands that were executed by the threat actor. Everything that the attacker has done, so from the PowerShell execution of the command that was trying to download the malicious PowerShell uh, from uh, GitHub to uh, other commands that I have tried to run on the endpoint, everything here is recorded to the invoking of Mimikatz, etc. Everything has been recorded for me on uh, the endpoint. So uh, that's the timeline view. I'm going to go into the graph view, which is going to be much more helpful in understanding the different stages of the attack. So as you can see, since I, I played a very sophisticated attack, you're going to see that the attack was based on a WinWord file that ran MSHTA. This MSHTA actually loaded CMD and the commands that were run by the attacker are all shown here from who am I to others, the PowerShell commands, the bits admin job, etc. Since this attack has been played on my system many times, uh, you're going to see uh, many 
executions, many process trees. So for example, if I am looking at what did the attacker actually execute recently, which is the attack that I performed uh, minutes ago, if I click and at PowerShell uh, process, I can see the command that was run by the uh, threat actor. If I look at the bits admin uh, process, I can see that bits admin was used to download the PS exec tool from sys internals. So uh, this is how simple it is to dissect an attack uh, using CrowdStrike. I can see that the attacker has played system info, etc. From this view, I can actually go to the detections view and have the full process tree visibility on the attack. So as you can see, a very sophisticated attack that had 54 different detections. And you're going to see a very rich process tree that you will analyze. So if I am a threat hunter, I would love to have a tool at my disposal with the power that CrowdStrike provides. So I can see now everything that was done by the attacker. I can open the CMD commands. I can uh, trace them, etc. From this point onwards, after doing the analysis of the process tree, I can actually uh, do a host search to check everything that has run on this endpoint. I can as well contain the machine with one click, or I can connect to the host. So when I connect to the host, I will be sitting live on a command line that is reaching this endpoint where I can perform a, a process dump, a full memory dump, kill a process, delete a file, run a PowerShell script. So for example, I have my own library of PowerShell scripts that I use to uh, execute different tasks when it comes to incident response. All these capabilities are available at my disposal using CrowdStrike. So uh, let's uh, gather our thoughts again. Let's uh, conclude what we have just achieved. So in summary, what we've just achieved is a multi-staged attack that used no malware, no virus, no unknown executable. And if I look at the processes that were loaded as part of the attack, uh, on this screenshot, you can see the uh, yellow arrows pointing out to the malicious commands that were used by the attacker that are actually fully legitimate, that will not ring any bell on your existing AV. This is how an attacker is successfully able to penetrate your environment and live there for weeks or months, encrypt your data, steal it, uh, cause a ransomware infection without having any alert on a legacy EDR or a traditional endpoint protection solution. So from another angle, it's also very important to be able to have the right tools to show me the exact command line activities that are performed by, uh, by an attacker. Otherwise, I will not be able to stop this attacker. There is a very thin line between what an actual attack is and what a false positive or a normal operation on a Windows machine is. If, if the attacker is blending in using the same tools, the same commands, the same access as uh, a normal system admin, it will be very difficult to detect them and remove them from an environment. Here, machine learning is at our disposal to help us. Artificial intelligence is at our disposal to be able to uh, create these patterns and these trends and perform this modeling to uh, detect uh, the difference between a normal behavior and an actual threat. And of course, nothing replaces the manual proactive threat hunting that needs to be able to analyze telemetry, not just detection or alert data. If I just rely on my products to uh, perform a detection or an alert, I am guaranteed that I will be at some point 
penetrated without the uh, knowledge or the detection capabilities of my uh, traditional uh, products. So findings and conclusions, what we need to look at in order to stop a modern sophisticated attack is having the tools that provide visibility across the complete attack life cycle, specifically at the endpoint level. The tool that I would need to use should not just collect telemetry, it should be able to analyze and correlate the thousands of telemetry events into detections and if possible, and that's only possible with a very uh, few solutions on the market, the ability to correlate hundreds of detections into dozens of incidents or even less. I need to have a process tree view on the uh, executions on my endpoint to see where the threat came from. So whether it came from an infected email or an infected uh, web server or an infected thumb drive, I need to have the visibility on the process tree execution. And more specifically, I need to have a drill down on the specific actions that were performed by the attacker so that I can eradicate them and I can remove uh, their persistence and their traces from my system. We're talking here about uh, the file name, the file hash, the file path, the command line execution, the host name, the username, the first scene, the uh, file write activity of, of, a, uh, of, a, of, a, of an actual file, the disk operation, the DNS request, the network activity, and if possible, correlate everything with the right uh, threat intelligence sources. And CrowdStrike being one of the global uh, th threat intelligence providers, our uniqueness stems from the fact that we have blended our millions of IOCs that are updated daily by our threat intelligence team into uh, the EDR technology. Today, if you use EDR simply uh, to uh, collect events and to generate detections without correlating it with the right sources of threat intelligence, you would not be making the most out of your investment. And that's the problem that CrowdStrike solves. So um, uh, in kind of another conclusion that we've got from this test, and that's actually the stat that we live by at CrowdStrike. It's what we call the 11060 rule. We believe that before an attack reaches stage eight or a lateral uh, propagation stage, I should be able to detect it and stop it before the execution spreads in my environment. So we believe that we need to detect an attack in one minute. We need to be able to investigate it in 10 minutes, so having the right tools at our disposal to, to analyze the telemetry to be able to stop this attack. And we need to be able to respond to this cyber attack within less than an hour. And uh, guess what? Probably more than 95% of the SOCs around the world cannot achieve these metrics. These are very challenging metrics by all measures, by all means. And this uh, shows us that we need to up our game up the ante if we really want to stop uh, the uh, advanced cyber attackers. In summary, attacks are much more sophisticated. And when we are actually hacked, uh, very few solutions uh, prove useful. So if I have the best firewall, the best sandbox, the best proxy, the best AV, but I actually get breached, very uh, small traces will be found by these uh, existing prevention-minded uh, solutions. And of course, uh, today it's much uh, more difficult than ever to hire and retain highly skilled individuals uh, in incident response and threat hunting. Our promise to our customers is to help them protect themselves by providing a much more solid protection mechanism uh, on their endpoints while relieving the endpoints from uh, the uh, very uh, resource intensive solutions like an AV scanner or five different agents, etc. At CrowdStrike, we actually use a 35 megabyte agent that is the lightest agent in the industry that can be up and running within seconds. So the fastest time to value can be achieved with 
CrowdStrike, regardless of the number of endpoints that an organization has. Our platform is based on a, a single lightweight agent powered by ThreatCraft, which is our AI uh, engine uh, that is a global uh, threat hunting engine uh, at a very massive scale combined with threat intelligence. As mentioned earlier, threat intelligence need to be, needs to be an integral part of your uh, EVR or detection and response uh, strategy. So uh, our threat intelligence feed uh, actually permeates everything that we do. And uh, since we are uh, one of the best feeds available on the market, as well as one of the best threat intelligence uh, program builders uh, available out there, we have combined uh, the IOCs with the endpoints natively so that you can be protected from modern uh, attacks uh, within seconds. When we find an IOC in a remote location, let's say in Brazil, we uh, add this IOC to our massive cloud engine and within seconds, a customer in Saudi Arabia is protected with no need to update, no need to upgrade. How, how often do you upgrade your uh, EDR agent? How often do you update your IOCs? At CrowdStrike, we do it at lightning speed, and that's why the market believes that we are the uh, best product out there. Behind the scenes, we uh, have hired some of the best minds in the world in threat hunting, incident response, machine learning, and our Overwatch service, which is our 24 by seven managed threat hunting is available for our clients. Apologies for the small uh, Wi-Fi disconnect. So uh, moving forward, um, no technology alone can solve the cybersecurity problem. Uh, that's why we uh, equip and power our service with what we call threat hunting on steroids, which is our Overwatch 24 by seven available uh, service for all our subscribed clients. And we actually uh, improve uh, the customer security posture by adding the services piece, which is incident response, compromise assessment, maturity assessment, etc. If you have uh, been following the market trends, uh, specifically Gartner, you will see that CrowdStrike in a record three years time has made its way up to the top with the highest completeness of vision versus vendors who've been out there in the market for more than 25 years. So the market truly believes in the way we are directing the endpoint security vendors. Um, if you look at Forrester, another uh, third party evaluator, they actually agree. So um, uh, CrowdStrike is recognized as a leader in both endpoint security and EDR. These are the two latest reports from Forrester, again, with the strongest strategy among all other vendors. So CrowdStrike is truly defining the future of where the endpoint security space is heading. Also recognized as a leader in the Forrester wave for incident response services, uh, one of the leading providers of IR, and not only that, we are the fastest incident responders on earth. How do we achieve that? We achieve that by simply rolling out an agent and having our uh, team of incident responders available within the next two or four hours to protect our customers, depending on when they need us. A proven leader in the endpoint security space, we actually make sure that we are uh, measured not only in Gartner or Forrester, but also in SE Labs, AV Comparatives, MITRE, et cetera. If you go to Gartner Peer Insights, you will see that the highest rated product in the EDR space uh, with a rating of 4.9 over five uh, is actually CrowdStrike. Trusted by nine of the top 20 major banks, almost half of the Fortune uh, 100, seven out of 10 largest energy institutions around the globe with um, dozens of testimonies from our clients on our website, we truly invite you to partner with CrowdStrike as your cybersecurity provider in the space of 
detection, response, prevention, threat intelligence. So how can we help you as uh, our customers? We look at our customers as our actual partners. We pro provide protection for their workloads. So whether your workload is a container or a cloud asset or an on-prem asset or a virtual machine, a Mac, a Windows, a Linux box, etc. Using uh, our scalability model, we are able to provide you with multiple uh, uh, modules for uh, protection, visibility on your endpoints. We are a pure subscription-based product. So there is no upfront development or cost to pay or professional services required to be up and running with uh, CrowdStrike. And if we equip our technology with the best services out there in managed threat hunting and in IR services, as well as in threat intelligence, uh, we uh, invite you to have a conversation with us on uh, how our solution is compelling enough to fulfill your cybersecurity needs. Our commitment to you is to provide you with improved protection, is to simplify the number of agents you deploy on, a, on your endpoints. So we use a single lightweight agent. Our commitment is to equip you with a, a world-class expertise coming from threat hunters, from incident responders, from threat intelligence researchers, and our final commitment is that we can be protecting you within the day. So if you decide to use CrowdStrike, you roll out the agent, and that, that's all what you need to do. So thanks a lot for the time you have uh, given us to um, spend discussing uh, a modern attack and how can CrowdStrike help. My email address is on this uh, final slide. And I will be happy to take uh, Q&A after the session or follow up Q&A via email. Thank you so much and have a great day and have a great event as well.